And I am back. Sorry about that. Just had to end a recording, start a new one, all that kind of fun stuff. So, and actually posted my review blog that I'm doing this because the March Metroid is something I started on my review blog. So it would be a good idea to actually post that I'm doing this on my review blog. So, now that we're back and ready to roll, let's roll. Gonna visit... Uh, Fendrana Drifts, after we go through a little bit of Magmar Caverns, which is, uh... Have I scanned these? Yes, I have. Okay, I should probably just back up. Okay. Anyway, Magmar Caverns, which is analogous to uh, Lower Norfair, actually has a remix of Lower Norfair as well, which is pretty nifty, even though I had no idea that's what it was the first time I played this game. Well, like I said, I totally skipped Metroid. Uh... I didn't grow up with an NES, so I never played the original Metroid until I actually unlocked it in this game. Um, and then, uh... Super Metroid, I never had a chance to play until it came out on the Wii Virtual Console. Uh, just because I never had it for the Super Nintendo. And then Metroid 2... I think I bought a used copy of that at, like, uh... It was at an Owl's Music in Federal Wave, which has unfortunately since burned down. Which really makes me sad, because it was a great place for, like, movies and games and music and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think there's, like, another location in Tacoma, but I don't live there anymore, so, well, darn. Anyway, this is the, uh, Magmor that the caverns are named after. And now it's dead. You know, you just blow up its head and it falls into a lava and it's like, bah, darn. These are puffers. Which have like a new name in every single Metroid Prime game they appear in, so you know, that's funny. Ouch, lava. Yeah, come on. Gotta get used to these jumps. There we go. Jeez, these guys take a lot of missiles. God damn. Alright, now is it this one I can blow up yet? Just fire a bunch of missiles at it. Yeah, no, it's not this one. It's the next room. Okay, cool. Uh, you'll find out why I'm doing that in a minute. Oh, right, this is sandstone. I gotta blow it up with more fall bombs. Bada boom. Oh, woo! Almost ran right into that thing. Ouch. I'm gonna blow over in my face. I'm real good at this game, guys, I swear. thing in the middle. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I was just hitting it in the wrong spot. Doi. There we go. Oh, God. Lava does a lot of damage. So what is this, I hear you ask? And how did you know it was inside that? Well, it is one of the Chozo artifacts. Specifically, the Artifact of Nature. You need to collect all 12 in order to get to the final boss of the game. So that's why I'm collecting them now, as opposed to later. Uh, technically, uh, there is a way to find out where they all are. And in fact, I could have gone and done that right away if I wanted to. But, um, it's just easier to just pick them up as I go. Uh, not to mention, uh, the way the, the way the game, uh, kind of sets itself up is you're kind of supposed to play through the game and then collect them last, which is not very efficient at all. I mean, that's like the way you'd play it the first time you play the game. Like, you'd go through the game, you'd be, like, doing everything, and then eventually you'd get to a point where you're just like, Ooh, what do I do now? And then you'd find, like, the room, which has one of the very artifacts you're trying to pick up and then scan logs that tell you where the other 11 are 
and then you're supposed to use these scan logs. They don't directly tell you, but they like give you a hint, a pretty obvious hint at that, where to pick them up. And then you're just supposed to kind of like take that and run with it and uh, basically backtrack throughout the entire game to pick up the artifacts. Which is a very long, long process. It's very long. That's the way it works the first time you play this game. Uh, when you know where they all are, and you kind of know what you're doing, or, even better, you just basically pick up the hint early on, which we'll do, uh, just because I might forget otherwise. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing that the Prime Games got some slack for was the amount of backtracking that you have to do, and it's pretty much entirely because of that final backtracking bit where you gotta go through pretty much every area of the game with a fine-toothed comb to pick up the Chozo artifacts that you do not yet have. And there's 12 of them, so you gotta go through a lot of the game. <laughs> now, granted some of them you actually do naturally get as part of the gameplay already, like, uh, there's one I can think of that the game pretty much hands to you no matter what before you, even even if you don't like have all the hints and whatnot but yeah it's just generally it's a lot easier and a lot faster to just kind of do it the way I'm doing it which I know because Back in the day, I did have a strategy guide for this game, and I had a strategy guide from the guys who made the best strategy guides ever. That's right, I'm talking about versus books. They're not around anymore, sadly. Great things never last, I'm afraid to say. But they made the best strategy guides. They had the best Metroid Prime guide because it told you how to find everything as you were playing the game, like, even if it didn't have, like, oh, hey, by the way, you can backtrack to collect this now, it was like, oh, you can get it now if you do this, so just do this. Like, blowing up that pillar with a missile. Like, Nintendo Strategy Guide probably would have said, oh, uh, you can do that later. Versus Books just says, do it right now. It's faster. It's easier. So they tell you where to grab everything as you're grab as you're going through. So, oh god, these guys are tough. Oh yeah, that's right. These take one more missile to blow up. Then on the forget oh, two more missiles. Damn, son. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's how you shoot missiles faster. Just basically rock your thumb back and forth on A and Y. I think it still works in the Wii version, too, so, you know, that's fun. Uh, anyway. Yeah, the Versus Books guide was just really good, and it also included a full guide for, like, the original Metroid in there, too. Like, after you unlock it, uh, which you need to beat Metroid Fusion to unlock it, so it wasn't really that... Uh, helpful unless you had a copy of Metroid Fusion. Um, but the only problem I had with it is it wasn't like the Sonic Advance... It wasn't like the Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and Sonic Advance Guide where um, they were both part of the same guide because the games were sort of linked by the Chow Garden. So it didn't have, like... You couldn't flip it over and get the Metroid Fusion Guide. Which... Uh, I guess I can understand, just because this game is, well, like, more... There's more to say about this game than there is, uh, Sonic Adventure, I guess. Sonic Adventure Guide did have a glaring issue. It was obviously copied from, like, their Dreamcast version of the guide, because, I tell you what, it didn't update the information for Cosmic Wall's, uh, Act 5S rank. So this is where... Uh, getting good with the double bomb jump is necessary because uh, this part will just drop you in the lava if you can't do it right. There we go. Whew. Basically, you want to wait until 
just before the bomb blows up. Oh god. Okay, I've gotta reset that block. Because I totally messed that up. Okay, here we go. And voila! An energy tank is now ours. Ta-da! And now we can just regular bomb jump through the rest of there. And on the other side of this elevator is Fendrana Drifts. How do these elevators work, man? Now, Fendrana. I just... I love Fendrana Drifts. A lot. It helps that we haven't seen an area like this in a Metroid game before. I, this is the first time I've played a Metroid game, so whatever. Metroid games hadn't had ice areas until Prime Infusion, actually. <laughs> How about that? But also just the music here. And the falling snow. It's I I love winter like settings. I'm pretty much the exact opposite of a Kiritoriyama in that regard. I love the hell out of winter and snow and all that stuff. Well, I love snow when it's not messing with my ability to drive. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, Fendrana uh, is just one of my favorite Metroid settings in general, uh, just because it's so. It's so peaceful and beautiful. Just like the music really just sets the mood, I think. Like, whenever I hear this music, I think of snow. And whenever I see snow, I usually think of this music. Oh, right. Gotta. Oh, gotta blow it up with a missile. Okay. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Gotta scan that first. There we go. Now the door is unlocked. I always forget to do that. Whoop. Whoop. Mm, seeing some pixelation on the uh, zoom in feature of the. Uh, Scan visor. <laughs> I want to scan these uh, crazy sonic birds. The visual for the shock cone on them is pretty cool. Flicker bats. Oh, scatter bomb mood. Now here's one of the cooler. These guys are cool because they actually mess with uh, Samus's visor. They give your visor static. I always thought that was really cool. They're one of my favorite enemies in the game just because of that. It's just so cool. Oh, these are she goths. Well, baby she goths rather. These guys are a pain to fight. And there you can actually see the uh, charge beam meter on the left side of the crosshairs. Because you gotta circle around them and shoot them in the back. The rest of their body is totally invulnerable. Until you shoot their back off. Oh! Uh, you also gotta be careful because their breath can freeze you and you gotta jump like a bajillion times in order to break free. Whoop. Okay, here we go. God, I love this music. It's so good. Okay, seriously, shoot the book. Ah. 
I did not scan that guy earlier. I love these guys. Crystallites. They don't do anything. You gotta use missiles to kill them, but I love them. They're adorable. If I had a plushie of one, I would treasure it forever. Oh. There's the sound of a power-up I can't get yet because I don't have the power-up I need to get it. No. Oh. Ooh, two for one. Nice. These are literally the same thing as the burrowers from Magmore Caverns, except now they're ice burrowers. Ooh. Very different. They're still just as easy to, easy to dispatch. I have more of a problem with them than the Wii version, just because uh, I have the lock-on free look thing on, and uh, I have a problem like aiming direct center a lot of the time, just because I'm bad at games. Bada bing. Bay day bang, bay day boom. Oh my god, there was another one. Whoop. There's like pretty obvious Chozo Temple over there. Like I can I love how I can just tell from the architecture. It's kinda cool. This game's got visual style, man. Oh, more she goths. Whoa. And yes, they basically shoot ice hadoukens. Fortunately, they're not actually that difficult to dispose of. You just gotta dash around them a whole bunch and shoot them and shoot them and shoot them and shoot them. It's when you get to the fully grown she goths that you start having problems. There's a Chozo lore in here. Yes. Cradle, da, 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 darkness, artifacts, yes, vigilance, yes. Basically, dang this poison sucks. Scan these. Scan these. If you do not scan these and you basically just keep going, they never come back. The ice shriek bats, they are one of the few miserable scans in this game, and they suck. They suck so hard. And in the original GameCube version, you didn't have New Game Plus. The Wii version adds New Game Plus. Like, you can play through the game again after you've beaten it uh, the first time. And basically, keep all your scan logs from the first time you played it, which is really nice. You don't keep any of the, like, the equipment, but you can like take on the game at a harder difficulty, basically. Um... And, yeah, you keep all the scan logs, so if you miss something, you can go back and get it. Uh, but GameCube version? Nope. No such thing. So if you miss those Ice Shriek Bats, you're... You're fucked, basically. No other way to put it. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. They do breathe ice during their death throes sometimes, and that ice can freeze you, so be careful! Oh, oh hey. No more false shenanigans here, yet. Well, that seems precarious. And it is, the platforms do start falling. So, yeah, you gotta jump across them. But your reward is the first unique power-up for Metroid Prime. Uh, aside from the scan visor, but... Yes, it is the Boost Ball! Boost Ball. So the Boost Ball basically lets you... Uh, boost up half pipes like these whoa weird gravity going on there 
Whee! Except, you know, you gotta be all the way through before you jump out. There we go. Boost Ball is one of the coolest... <laughs> Woo! There you go. I did it. I did it for you. You want to see me do it again? Woo! Woo! There you go. Power up the woo counter. We got woos going on. Feeling a little woozy. Whoa, hey. There we go. Now I remember why I played on hard mode. It's because normal mode is too easy. Oh, here we go. Whoa! That won't get annoying. No, my goodness, a cutscene! Ridley too big for smash. Well, I feel like I can take on a gigantic space dragon. Ouch. Cool thing is there's no falling damage in this game, but if you fall from high enough, you do uh, get stunned, basically. At least this isn't like that weird hack of mania that replaces all of the sound effects with the WOO! I have no idea who made that hack. I have no idea why they made that hack. But I think it's probably the best video game hack ever made. But yes, the boost ball is one of the best things in this game. And it gets a lot of upgrades in the next game. Like, seriously, you think it's good now? Oh, I just showed off. There is some limited auto-aim in this game as well. Like, if you're kind of aiming in the direction of an enemy, uh, like, right there, it just happened, uh, your shots have some limited tracking ability. So, that really helps a lot. So yeah, just, you know, a whole bunch of little things like that is just all over this game. Now let's see, where do I want to go? I think I do want to go that way, yeah. Ouch, ouch, oh god. What is happening? Ah! I'm pretty sure I want to go this way. I'm pretty sure this is the right way to go. Oh, hang on. Yep, these things. I hate them. Ooh, ooh. By the way, do not be fooled. There isn't like a little morph ball thing there. Trust me, one time I thought there was, there isn't. Uh, there actually is no way to become completely immune to lava in this game. Uh, in uh, Super Metroid, just getting the uh, gravity suit uh, would make you immune to lava. And I mean, that was also the case in uh, Fusion. And also Zero Mission. Basically, in the 2D Metroid games, there's usually a way to become immune to lava, unless you're playing one or two. Oh, God damn it! No, no, no. There we go. But uh, in this game, there's no way to become immune to lava, so don't jump in lava. Basically, I mean, I know that should go without saying, but yeah, don't don't do it. It's bad for your health. I can't remember. Is there? Some yes, there is something up there. I want to get it. I want it. God, I want it. Oop. Well, this isn't precarious at all. Boing. Okay. Whoa. And now we are going to go back. Because this path should take us to... The Talon Overworld. Oh, hey. Whoop. Whoop. After we take care of one more Magmar. Come on. God, 
those take a lot of missiles. Alright. Here's a morph ball track that kind of locks you into place so you don't have to worry about uh, falling off. There's a few of those throughout the game. Which is kind of cool. Yep, okay, Talon Overworld. That's where I want to go. Yep. And away we go! By the way, don't bother looking for map stations of Talon Overworld or Magmore Caverns. They don't have them. Also, hey, another missile expansion! Yay! Ouch. Just fire the missiles! Fire all of them! This is a very big room. You're going to see a lot of it, so get used to it. It's gonna... It's gonna appear in this playthrough a lot. What is this called? The Root Cave. Get used to the Root Cave. Say hi to the Root Cave, everybody. Have you gotten acquainted with the Root Cave? Do you know it well? Alright. Then let's climb up the Root Cave. Whoop. Ah, uh, damn it. And that's why you're going to see a lot of the root cave. Miss, miss positioned jumps. Which I have been doing a lot of in this playthrough. Damn. I'm pretty sure I'm just sucking hard. Oop, okay, here we go. Oh, ah. Uh, okay. personal. It's personal now. I know that's a jump that can be made. I know it can be made because they had to have made it makeable. So here we go. Alright. <laughs> there we go. Whoop. Jesus. I don't normally have that much... well... I normally have the uh, space jump, I guess. Okay. Cool thing about the blood flower is if you shoot its poison dart as it spits it at you, you just instantly kill it because her de derp, it evolved to be poisoned by its own poison. So here we are in this room, all the way back at pretty much the beginning of our Talon Four expedition. Oh, look at that. It was a half pipe the whole time. In fact, I think we can scan it now. Oh, no. That's right, half pipes are scannable in uh, Prime 2. But yeah, we can go up the half pipe. Bada bing! Shoot that. Bomb that. Bomb that. Bomb that. Oh. Right, there are zoomers in here. Totally forgot. And hey, look at it. It's our ship. Which, by the way... Ah, come on. Scan the ship. It is a research entry. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Oh, well. What's nice is, in here, are the space jump boots, at last. <laughs> now we can jump good. So yeah, the space jump... Super helpful. It also lets you do a double dash. Uh, not the Mario Kart, but when you do the sidestep dash, you can do it twice in a row. 
Okay, so, now we are going to, first of all, we're going to grab a power-up that's basically hidden right behind us at the beginning of the game. Oh, God. Here we're going to missile expansion. Yeah. And now, we are going to do that thing I mentioned a little bit earlier, which is get all the hints for the uh, Chozo artifacts, because, well, we're in the neighborhood, we might as well do it now. Also, kind of like Super Metroid, the final area of the game is pretty close to where you start. In fact, that's kind of a trend for Metroid games in general, I think. Let's see. Let's think about it. Yeah, it's kind of a trend for Metroid games to have the final area pretty close to where you start the game. Because I'm thinking about it, Turian's pretty much right on top of where you start in a Metroid Zero Mission and the original Metroid. In Metroid 2, the entire game's a giant loop, so, like, the end is literally just a few rooms from the ship, just by virtue of it being a giant loop. Uh... Let's see. In Metroid Fusion, the final area is technically sort of the, uh... Well, I mean... Bleh. God damn it, the flight deck. Like, you fight the SAX for the last time on the flight deck, and then you fight the final boss, actually, in the docking bay, so... Uh, there you go. That's literally where you start. Uh... Hunters doesn't really count, just because it kind of goes for a level-based system. I guess Prime 3 doesn't really count either. Prime 2 kind of counts, because you start out in the, uh, in the Grand Temple grounds, and then you have to travel to the dark version of the Grand Temple, so it's kind of, kind of like that, I guess. So yeah, this is basically just explaining, uh, Scan all the other artifact things to get all the artifacts and all that. Woo. And then, yeah, these light up, uh, depending on how many artifacts you've collected. So, yeah, ba ba da. We have returned power to the Chozo Totem. A grove. Woo. A shrine. Ooh. A sun chamber. Wow. A hall. Uh, it doesn't really sound quite as grand, but okay. A light. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, edge. Uh, careful, you might get sued by that one guy. A tower. Okay. So yeah, you actually can't get the locations of every artifact from here, but that's because, gasp, gasp, some of them were stolen by the space pirates. Whoa! So you actually got to do a little old-fashioned exploring for those ones. Fortunately, they're all in pretty easy-to-find areas, so you don't gotta worry about it too much. Actually, I think this right here is a pirate log. Yeah, this is space pirate data. It basically says, Gosh dang it, why'd they have to build a stupid key to the place we want to get into? Stupid Chozo Bar. Whee! All right, cool. So now that we got the space jump, we actually got to go back to Fendrana. But we are going to do it by taking a detour through the Chozo Ruins because, hey, we got stuff now. 
And when we have stuff, we can... Oh, God. Damn. Huh, forgot these things explode. And when we got stuff, we can get more stuff. That is the way of the Metroid. So yeah, we're just going to take a brief detour through the Chozo ruins. Nothing big. Just going to pick up maybe two. I'm going to say two missile expansions. Maybe. Dooba 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 do doo ba ba. And actually, it may only be one. Oh god, come on. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool, whatever. Boom, you're dead. <laughs> Bay day buying me. Oh yeah, that's right. It's actually in this spot. <laughs> Derp. Now, I'm pretty sure you can just double jump up here. Oh, hang on. Maybe not. Oh, you can. <laughs> That's right. If you look to the side, you can just double jump straight up there. Derp. Now that we got the boost ball, we can fire through these areas ultra fast. Yada yada yada, blah blah blah. Shooting ions. Which are basically the Beamos of the series, I guess. Super Ultra, who cares? Who cares? I don't! Ah! Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You may have seen Samus' hand kind of doing a weird floating thing in front of the thing. That's just because I was rapidly hitting the lock-on button. Whenever you lock on to something, Samus... Uh, well, it's not when you lock on to something. It just kind of does it for some reason. When you hold down the R button, she puts her arm on the cannon. And you can just aim it in any direction you want. Obviously, since there's no hold to aim button in the Wii version... Uh, that doesn't happen. Instead, you get Samus putting her arm on the cannon if you just hold it still for a while. So I think it's good that they kept that animation. In fact, it's one of the few animations that's actually modular, which is extra nice. But yeah, it was very nice of them to actually keep that, to find a way to keep that animation. Whoa! I'm sorry, that was a really bad woo. Let me try that again. There we go. Okie dokie, let's go. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, I think there's another thing we can pick up along the way, because now we have the space jump. Yay! I mean, technically, you can get it without the space jump. It's just really hard to get out. Really hard. Wow, where did that charge shot go? Ah. There we go. Did I scan those? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Got the Grisbees. Wasn't that the name of the character from uh, Secret of Nim? No, that was Brisby. Right, never mind. My bad. My bad. I've never seen that movie, so uh, feel free to voice your complaint about my plebeianness. Uh, never, because I don't care. The crates. Continue making our way through Magmore Caverns with uh, this dope ass music. Gotta love the lower Norfell. A bit. Norfell? Bleh. Norfair. I apologize for continually mixing up my R's and my L's. I swear to God, I'm not doing it on purpose. 
Well, except that one time. I did that one on purpose. And that one. I should stop now. Let's see. That is breakable. And then... <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, yeah. No, that's right. Uh... Ah, god damn. That one doesn't blow up. But, basically, there's an invisible platform here. This is what I'm deciphering at the moment. And it is right there. Oh, okay. Big platform too, Jesus. Is there another one nearby that I can use? Get ready for the fun part of uh, bleh, fun part of the playthrough where I just try to find this invisible platform. There's gotta be another bit of bleh, invisible platform around here somewhere that I can use to jump up there. Or maybe I can jump up to it from a higher place. From a higher power. I think I'm a little bit higher now. Okay. Ah, God. This platform is a bitch to land on. Okay. There we go. I did it. Uh, it's because it continually moves up and down. I hate it. <laughs> well, I bet that was fun. There's nothing over there either. this game, putting effort into creating realistic looking areas, just make people run into lava to find things, or shoot a million times for an invisible platform. I mean, I could have waited until I got the power up that lets me see it, but where'd be the Where would the fun be in that? I ask you. Yep. There we go. More puffers. Creeds, or whatever. But uh, these. There we go. Alright, so we're almost back to Vendrana. Uh, once we get to Vendrana, we're going to be collecting a new beam! That's right, finally, we're going to have a new beam power up. It's going to be the wave beam, which doesn't work quite the way it does in the 2D Metroid games, but it's still a pretty good power up. <laughs> and we're going to end up using it through a lot of the next section of the game. In fact, it's pretty much going to be my beam of choice from now on. Uh, just because it's... It's not as fast as the power beam, but it is more powerful, and it also homes in on enemies, so it's just generally more useful overall than the power beam. <laughs> and it's going to be my beam of choice until we pretty much get the plasma beam, which is just the strongest beam in the game and will be my beam of choice unless I need to use another beam for something. 
but that's not for a very long time. So now we're back in Fendrana Drifts. It's cold, it's chilly, nobody likes it here, except for me, because it's beautiful. And the music. Ah. I love this music so much. This doesn't actually get remixed a whole lot. It kind of gets referenced in later games. It gets a re it, it gets a proper remix in Metroid Prime Pinball, but that's just because one of the tables is Vendrana Drifts. But uh Prime 3 just kind of has a reference to it. It doesn't actually have it. It just has a track that sounds suspiciously similar to Fendrana Drifts. And now we're here so we get, like, the Chozo Temple theme. Uh, Baby She Gotham over here. Okay, bye. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't really get remixed a whole lot. Uh, kind of gets a quasi... It, it gets referenced in Hunters as well. But it doesn't really get remixed until Prime 3's uh, Rundus boss fight. Which features... Um, which is just one of the best tracks in a Metroid game ever. Like, it's amazing. But, uh, like, the Rundus boss fight from 3 features a mix of Rundus' theme, Fendrana Drifts, and then also a little bit of the Thardis battle theme from this game. And it all adds up to just one of the most incredible tracks in the game. I'm sorry I'm messing up my jumping so bad right now. Oh my god. Oh, for Christ's sake. I might as well sh God damn, I keep hitting my head on the ceiling there. There we go. By the way, a cool thing in this game. Aside from, like, the trippy light show. Ah, I did it wrong. You can see it for like a brief second there, but whenever something bright flashes near, uh, basically your face, you can see a reflection of Samus's eyes in the visor. Again, it's just one of those really cool details that really makes everything feel, like, more alive and real. Even though this is, you know, kind of a cartoony game. I mean, you're running around as a bright orange bounty hunter on an alien planet with gigantic shoulder pads that would make even the NFL blush, but, uh... I mean, but then you have, like, cool stuff like this, like this giant space bird statue. Okay, which one I gotta find? Uh... Oh, yeah, Seek Torn. It's a Shaman. So, here we've got the Shaman. Oh my goodness, Brimstone. That means you can blow it up with a missile. But the others are... A Chozo Architect. A Chozo Philosopher. And a Chozo Warrior. And they all do have, like, different uh, designed faces. I think. Yeah. Alright, see you later, Negasonic. And, uh, cool. Sonic Adventure is up on his YouTube channel. Uh, for context, I play... Well, I played Sonic Adventure with Negasonic. He played some characters, I played some characters. Uh, and we're kind of doing a playthrough of that. It's up on his YouTube channel, so check it out. Well, the first part of Sonic is up. We're working on getting more parts of stuff out, but yeah. Basically how it works is, uh, he played Sonic, and then I played Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, and then he also played Big and, um, Gamma. God, I had to think about it for a second. 
Oh boy, the wave beam just sitting out there in the open. Well, I guess I can just run up and grab it. Oh my goodness, what was that tremor? Uh... Oh my goodness, an army of she-goths. There we go. Fortunately, these guys are still babbies, so they're still really easy to kill. Oh, oh. Not sure how I avoided being frozen there, but I'll take it. Give me more missiles. More missiles. Oh, missiles. Oh, well, I'm already full up on missiles. Alright, well, I hope it's not like bears are... Oh, God! <laughs> Jesus. This thing's terrifying. This is the Shigoth. They are invulnerable to beam weapons because they just absorb beam weapons. It's kind of crazy, actually. Oh yeah, just shoot him. Well, I actually can't seem to shoot him with missiles. Oh yeah, that's great. You gotta wait for it to do that, and then you can shoot it right in its stupid face. You can also turn it into a morph ball and like bomb its underside, but I never really got that to work very well. So I just prefer this method of just firing missiles at it until it keels over. I have no idea what charging it up does, by the way. But yeah, you basically gotta wait for it to hyperventilate uh, after it uses its frigid breath because it's got shit for stamina. Whoa, come on. Come on, use your ice breath. Thank you. Alright, come on. There we go. Oh, I got twice in a row, nice. Good god. Just die already. I've used up all my missiles on you. There we go, thank you. So yeah, the Shigoth family aren't really that threatening. It's just the mommy one's a pain because it absorbs beam shots. Yep. But now we have the wave beam. Oh. Let's fill up on missiles, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Throw these up over here. Missiles, missiles, missiles. All good. So, now we can open up these purple doors that we couldn't before, because those can only be opened up with the wave beam. Because they're purple, and the wave beam is purple. And that's how doors work. So, if you ever encounter any purple doors in real life, now you know. So I mentioned that the wave beam works like Oh yeah, I can also destroy these guys. After a little while. Uh, bada boom! And you can see it also kind of homes in on enemies. Uh, boom! Yeah! This beam's awesome. So, uh... In... The 2D Metro games, the wave beam is the one that travels through walls, basically. It can travel through inorganic objects. So, like, you get it, and then you can, like, shoot things through walls and all that kind of craziness. It's a good time. It's a good time to be had. In this game, it doesn't really do that. It does, Well, it doesn't pass through walls. It just kind of stops. Instead, the wave beam has an element... And in fact, most beams in this game have a unique element associated with them, except for the power beam, which has no element. So, as you can see, 
the wave beams element is electricity. So you can actually stun enemies using charged wave beam shots. You can stun them for a little bit so that you can like get in some extra hits on them. The wave beam doesn't fire quite as fast, but as I demonstrated, it does have a limited homing capability, so that makes it pretty versatile. Uh, where do I want to go right now? No. Not yet. I want to go there later. But I do want to go here now. So we're going to be in Fendrana for a while until we reach the next boss. So just saying that right now. But... Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, the wave beams... Unique element is electricity, so you can use it for, like, electrical-related things. Like, uh, we're gonna see a lot of power conduits throughout the game that you need to re-energize using the wave beam. And if an enemy is weak to electric-type damage, use the wave beam. And we will run across enemies that are particularly weak to electric-type damage. I don't think it's quite as powerful as the power beam just because I'm noticing that like it's charge shots don't uh, deal as much damage to the shell of the she gods but that might be a unique quirk with it or something like that it still stuns them so it's still more useful even if it's not as strong So now that we have the space jump, we can jump up here. This is a missable scan log that gets added to your scan log, and there's only a few of these throughout the game, and when you shoot them down, it's permanent. So if you shoot them all down before you scan them, you can miss it. And then this is basically kind of sort of your last chance to get the ice shriek bats. Not really. So... Come on. Thank you. So let's assume you're playing through the game. Oh, dooby 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 doo. Oh, I didn't notice. Oh my goodness, I shriek bats. Ah. And you're like, oh darn, I forgot to scan them. Well, I'll just wait until I see them later. You never see them again after that. Not once. And the only way to get them to respawn is to basically backtrack a few rooms and then come back. If you continue through that purple door up ahead, you, you're just kind of screwed, and you can't get the scan log for them anymore. If you continue past a certain point, like, it's just gone forever. I Shriek Bats don't respawn ever again. Too bad. So sad. Sucks to be you, I guess. So, yeah. Definitely do not forget to get the I Shriek Bats. If you're aiming to 100% this game. Otherwise you're kind of up shit creek without a paddle. Sad as it is to say. So here we go. The boost ball kind of has its own version of the uh, morph ball bomb slot. And it's called the spinner. You basically just activate it by jumping in and using the boost ball. And it spins a thing. It's pretty self-explanatory. Whoop. Here's a pretty simple puzzle room. Okay, gotta jump up here, scan this, before I forget. When in doubt, scan it. Scan it, scan it, scan it. If you don't, if you're afraid it might show up in your logbook, scan it. If it doesn't, at least you get some cool flavor text. If it does, you save yourself a headache later. There you go. Alright, 
So that basically activates like water drainage. That's how we can get uh, up to the top of the room. But first we want to grab this energy tank because hey, energy tanks. Hell yeah. Besides we're going to need it pretty soon. Because we're about to enter a uh, slightly more difficult area of the game. As hard as that is to believe. But you know, crazy things can happen in hard mode. So, best to play it safe than to regret it later. Okay. Use Morph Ball slot. Bidae bang, bidae boom. Work our way around again. You gotta be careful about these. Oh goodness. Birds. They can knock you off. And it is a massive pain if they do. God damn it. Stupid. Okay. Phew. Made it. Okay. Behind that door. Ah! This is a long jump, but also save station. Yay. The orange on Samus' suit is very subdued in this game. I guess it helps that they have, like, a really, like... It's a pretty good-looking metal, uh, shader that they got going. Are you ready for another missable scan? You better get this one. Oh, goodness. Well, okay. I'll deal with that in a minute. God damn. This. Scan this. Shadow Pirate. Cloaking technology. So you're probably thinking, well, why isn't it cloaked right now? Well, that's so you can scan it. There we go. Okay. Oh, my. God damn. Okay. So, yeah, the Shadow Pirate. If you do not scan it, uh, you're gonna hate yourself later because that's literally the only time you can scan the Shadow Pirate. Otherwise, they're invisible, so you can't see them with the scan visor. Hmm, this doesn't look like Chozo technology. Oh, uh, well, oh no. Space Pirates! Bah! Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. Might as well scan these actual Space Pirates. So, yeah. Uh, space Pirates. They were actually in this game. They have a slightly different design compared to the way they looked in Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion, obviously. Uh, they actually have uh, different designs throughout all the Prime games, which I believe is just kind of meant to imply that like Space Pirates employ multiple species. There isn't a single species that is just space pirate. Um, unless the serious unless there's a lot of serious divergence or something like that. I don't know. I'm not an expert on that sort of thing. But uh yeah, now we're gonna be fighting space pirates. The space pirates um in this game compared to the other Metroid games well, in the Metroid Prime series in general, compared to the other Metroid games, they have a much more significant presence in terms of, like, just what they do and personality. Like, all of this stuff. All of this stuff. All of this stuff is written and being done by space pirates. Like, the space pirates actually maintain, like, some kind of, like, scientific research station. In fact, that's what we're in right now, is just a Fendrana-based research station that the Space Pirates have built in order to do Phazon experiments for reasons. Presumably evil reasons. Oh yeah, the multi-missile trick is harder to do with the wave beam. That's right. Okay. But yeah, I mean, compare this to... Uh, 
well, the 2D Metroids where you don't really see the Space Pirates doing things that much. Or Other M, which seems to imply that they're just feral beasts that only know to organize when they're being controlled by, like, Ridley or Mother Brain or whatever. Which is just kind of dumb. I thought they were supposed to be this, like, incredible threat to, like, galactic peace, but the way Other M portrays it, it kind of feels like they're just there. They're less a cause of global, of a galactic threat, and sort of just, like, an instrument of it, as opposed to actually being actively, you know, working on, like, crazy experiments in order to take over the galaxy or something like that, like they're doing in the Prime games. Even though... Pirates don't generally want to take over the world, but, you know. This game kind of... Metroid series kind of runs fast and loose with what pirates and bounty hunters are, so... I think we can forgive it. If only because we love this game so much. Also, that crazy guitar riff in the Space Pirate Battle theme doesn't appear in the next two games. They totally get rid of it. I kind of miss it. I like that crazy guitar riff. It's just like, what? oh man! Just saw that guy get atomized by hitting an explosive crate next to him. That was amazing. Oh. By the way, if you shoot these things with, like, beam shots, the turrets, you can actually, like, dislodge them. Like, get them so that they're, like, swinging around randomly and just firing shots in every direction. I don't know if those shots can hurt space pirates. They probably can, though. Which is kind of cool. I'm saying they probably can, because there's an enemy later on that actually can just, like, eat space pirates. If you, like, open up a pen full of them in a room full of space pirates, it'll... They'll just run around and, like, eat all the space pirates so that you don't have to fight them. It's great. But then you have to fight the enemy itself, but they're really easy to dispatch in this game. So, it's not that big a deal. Compared to the space pirates you would have otherwise had to fight. So there's a lot of stuff in this room to scan. Uh, a lot of pirate data. Pirate data counts as a lore. So, if you want 100% this game, you better pick up all that pirate data. Also, don't worry about the elevator getting stuck. It is actually programmed to come back down if you're on the bottom floor. Isn't that nice? So you can tell if something's pirate data or not if it has a red scanning square. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Like this. Pirate data. Uh, pirate data. Uh, pirate data. Oh, wow, got 50% of all the logbook scans already. That's, a uh, something. That sure is a something, I tell you what. Alright. Enough of that silliness. do <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think you have to worry about pirate data being on the orange screen, so don't worry about it. And then you can probably hear there is something inside this tank, but we can't break it up because it's made of cordite. And we don't have the thing that breaks cordite quite yet. Though we will get it eventually. And here are these hatches that are on the ceiling. Fortunately, Samus gets a super jump when she stands under them. So you don't have to worry about uh, not being... Oh, goodness. I had no idea that was even there. Okay, I want fire missiles. So yeah, the multi-missile technique. Just like hit A and Y at like the exact same time and you can just spam missiles. It's great. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you will have a good time. Oh, here's a room full of space pirates. 
Oh goodness, one drops right in front of you. I totally forgot about that. How many Metroidvanias have I played? I've pretty much played only um, only the Metroid and the Shantae count. Shantae kind of counts. It's kind of Metroidvania. -y. You pick up power ups and go to previous areas. Pretty much, yeah. Um, Metroid and Shantae. I haven't really played any of the Castlevania ones. Though I've always kind of wanted to. I've just never really had Castlevania games. Except for Super Castlevania, which isn't really Metroidvania, funnily enough. But I love me a good Metroid game. Whoop. Fortunately, there is a save point at the top of this room, so I'll be able to regenerate my health, so I'm not too worried about getting health out of those boxes. Doop doop. Time to turn on a planetarium and also scan some more pirate lore. Yay! Yay! Is there any up there? Nope. Cool. They did not do the dick move. I don't know why. I just feel like putting a pirate lore up there would have been a dick move because nobody would have ever really looked up. Hmm. Yeah, Symphony of the Night's one I really want to play. It seems like a really cool game. That and Shadow Complex. It kind of seemed like a Xbox 360 version of Super Metroid. I just never played it, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, dang! I totally forgot about Guacamelee. Guacamelee is an excellent Metroidvania. Oh, man. That game is beautiful. I love that game. It is the best game. And Mummy Demastered, weirdly enough, is actually a really good Metroidvania. It's weird. It's a movie tie-in game, but it has, like, nothing to do with the movie. And it's just, like, it's just a Metroidvania set in the universe of the recent Mummy reboot. And it's really, really good. <laughs> that game was made by WayForward. They're the same guys who made Shantae, so they're generally pretty good at making a game. Ah, here we go. Planet Zebus. What? So there is a planet out there that has a sentient gaseous global exterminator virus called Mitteralis. That's terrifying. And here we go. Talon 4. Talon 4 is in the same star... Uh, bleh. Talon 4 is in the same star system as uh, Zebus. So that explains why Talon 4 is the... Uh, that explains why this game takes place right after the original Metroid. Twin Tabula. Twin Fever. A disease caused by a viral strain native to Twin Tabula in the early stages of degrees... Uh, Victims suffer from double vision. Man, but I love that song. Ooh, got that double vision. Oh, one more planet. Here we go. Dorming. Uninhabitable wasteland savaged by nuclear dust storms and const... Damn, nuclear dust storms. That sounds utterly terrifying. So yeah, this is kind of cool. I like this little planetarium. It also gives you like all kinds of crazy lore about the game, uh, lore about the game universe. It's just really neat. Stuff like that's neat. <laughs> Free aiming and shadow complex. Hmm. I'd imagine it probably works quite similarly to the way it does in uh, uh, the Metroid 2 remake on the 3DS. 
Samus Returns. Which it worked pretty well in that game. I do definitely want to give Shadow Complex a shot. Sometime. I imagine I will eventually give it a shot. If I ever get around to hooking my 360 up again. <laughs> Five missiles. So now we got the super missile. And the super missile is a super missile is super useful. It costs five missiles to use, but it basically packs the punch of five missiles into a single ultra missile. In fact, I think it's a little stronger than just five straight missiles. I actually don't know. I'm gonna have to test that. And by that I mean forget about it until much much later. <laughs> until well, never I guess. Uh, but yeah, the super missile is pretty much the mo best weapon in the game, kind of. I don't want to say best weapon. It's one of the most useful weapons in the game. You're going to be seeing me use it a lot. Especially because, I mean, it costs five missiles, so I mean, like, I got loads of missiles. I'm not really too worried about spending them. Plus, I mean, it homes in on enemies and does a shitload of damage, and it also does a pretty decent amount of splash, so... In general, it's just a really good weapon. Which we'll see some use out here. Oh, boy. Bada boom! Really, there's no reason to use the super missile right now, except there are a million breakable boxes around, so I can just instantly replenish. I think that guy actually lost me. I didn't know the AI was that sophisticated in this game. So these are flying space pirates. These guys are a little bit of a pain, just because they fly around, so, I mean, you gotta, like, aim up at them. They also fire, like, homing missiles, and if you just shoot them down normally, they do that. They'll dive bomb you and try to blow up in your face and hurt you. A later game describes it as death before dishonor. They would rather blow up than be captured, even though I'm pretty sure Samus doesn't take prisoners, but, you know, whatever. They dedicate themselves to their craft. Oh, goodness. And yeah, blowing up right in your face can't actually deal a fair amount of damage, so you do want to be careful. Now that that's all taken care of, the doors are open. Now, there is something important to do in this room, but we can't quite do it yet, so we're not going to do it right now. We're just going to move forward. Another nice thing about the new game plus in the Wii version is that uh, all of the scans are counted as... All the scans that you did in the first playthrough kind of already count as having been done. So when you, whenever you need to rescan those, it just takes like a second to do. You don't have to wait for it to scan. You can just be like, boop, boop, done. So if you want to do speed runs in the Wii version of the game, I would recommend doing a playthrough first and then uh, starting a speed run. If that makes any sense. Well, there it is. There's the Metroid. It happened. We found one. Metroid, energy-based parasitic predator, hmm? Dominant species of planet SR388, hmm, hmm. It can suck the life force out of living things, hmm. Oh. Metroid will latch onto its prey and drain energy, glowing larger than it does. The only way to shake an attached Metroid is to enter Marvel mode and light bomb, hmm. Fascinating, Captain- OH GOD! That actually did scare the hell out of me the first time I played it. It was just like, uh, Metroid? Doing nothing? Alright, I'll scan it, and then as soon as I finish scanning it, it just bursts out of the tank and starts attacking you. I think it's great. So yeah, Metroids in this game aren't really that much of a threat. I mean, in the 2D games, they're a huge pain in the ass, but in this game, you can just blow them up with anything, whereas in the 2D games, you gotta freeze them first. But we don't have an ice beam yet, so we can't do that, so we're just able to blow them up using the wave beam. So 
So yeah, Metroid's not that big a deal. Now, later variants of the Metroid. Oh boy, let me tell ya, those are nightmares. But we'll, those don't appear until like the very end of the game, so we don't gotta worry about them now. But later, damn. They are the worst. Death to space pirates. Space pirates must die. Whoop, whoop. God damn. I'm not good at dodging these. I apologize for the shitty gameplay. Alright, got rid of them all because the music stopped. And that's how you know you got rid of them all. Uh, let's see. Energy tank. I want it. Give me that shit. Thank you. And then there's actually another thing in here. There is a uh, blah 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 um, missile expansion, which is right over here. Jump up onto this lid. Ah, damn it! Oh yeah, I love the soundtrack of this game. Some of my favorite video game tunes in general, really. Fendrana Drifts, uh, Talon Overworld Depths, that awesome Lower Norfair remix in uh, Magmore Caverns. Just good stuff all around. Very atmospheric. I think this is a series that benefits more from atmospheric music than catchy music, which isn't to say it doesn't have, like, catchy tunes or whatnot, but, like, the atmosphere really helps make these games, I think. Like, even as early as, like, the NES Metroid, like, the, the music in that game, the way it was done, like, there are some sections where, like, the music doesn't even sound like music, it just sounds like alien, like, weirdness. Just running back, seeing if I missed any pirate data. Yep. Oh, after the defeat on Zebus, so that's obviously about how much we as Samus kicked ass and took names in the first Metroid game. I always kind of love it when you play a game and it references the previous games and makes you out to be like a totally awesome dude. Like, I mean, I'd never played the original Metroid game before playing this one. So, like, it kind of flew over my head back the first time I played this. But then, playing through Metroid Prime 2, like, one of the first scan logs you can get is from a Galactic Federation trooper who's just like, Man, I can't believe in this Samus Aaron person. Like, it literally unreal what they could have done. And it's just like, oh my god. But I played through, like, the first game and kind of did that. It was pretty cool. And you f find this other trooper log where it's just somebody fangirling over you. It's kind of great. Oh! Whoa! Ice beetles. I didn't know they appeared in this cave. I'm so used to the Wii version, where, like, things are actually, like, pretty different. Like, I'm pretty sure ice beetles don't appear in this cave in the Wii version. They're just like regular beetles, except they bury into the ground more often and pop out of the ceiling. What the fuck? Um. <laughs> okay. Oh, yep. Okay. Here we go. This is the beginning of pain. Fortunately, their missiles are easy to dodge because they're slow as balls. You just gotta watch out for the kamikaze attack, like, oh god! Splash damage on that is, like, really tiny, though. Oh, hi, Dustin! Home. Is that all of them? Hot damn, I think that's all of them. So don't immediately jump down to the bottom. Instead, you want to actually scan these things on the way down. Otherwise, you got to go all the way to the bottom, then come all the way back up to the top. And that's a pain for everybody, especially you guys, because you have to watch me do it. 
And I don't want to make you watch terrible things, even though, well, I mean, my gameplay of this game is terrible, so... Never mind. I don't want to make you watch really terrible things. There, that'll work. Oh. Uh, goody. But now we got super missiles, so I can just blow them up in one hit. Hell yeah! Oh, no, there we go. Whoa. Oi! Knock it off, you. I may be wasting missiles, but I don't care. Super missiles are just so satisfying to pull off. So there is an awesome glitch involved with that scan visor. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to activate it. I just know that it's a thing and that it's hilarious. But I know it most commonly happens if you have the fusion suit on. But basically, when you grab the visor, Samus's like entire model like just wigs out. It looks like it looks like those crazy like source filmmaker things where like the characters like limbs and pretty much every part of their body is like going into like random ass directions and like every direction and just turns into like a crazy porcupine except her face that's behind the visor it is some freaky shit dude and i recommend looking it up because it's it's hilarious but yeah i have no idea what causes that glitch i have no idea how to activate it myself but uh it's a good time. Oh my goodness, Shadow Pirates. Darn, they're invisible. Except for the fact that I have the Thermal Visor now, and now I can see them. So yeah, I really don't understand the uh, rationale here. Well, it'll make the area super dark so the player can't see, so they're going to be using the Thermal Visor anyway. And then we're going to throw enemies at them that can only be seen with the Thermal Visor. Oh, that would be cool. That would be wonderful, and I would appreciate it a lot. Thank you! Yeah, these Metroids are just not threatening in the slightest. <laughs> it's so funny! Like, just how, like... Oh my goodness, Metroids! Like, I imagine somebody who played a Metroid game before this one was probably like, Oh my god, Metroids, how the hell am I going to deal with these things? I don't have the ice beam. Shit, 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 shit. And then, like, they turn out to just be baby easy enemies that are so easy to defeat. Like, seriously, just hit them with a the charge shot while they're charging at you, and they're just like, Oh, why? I mean, they get bigger, but... Actually, that is a thing you can do. You can actually make them so big, they just explode. It's a thing, and it can happen. Yeah, like, they just suck up so much energy that they grow too big and they just explode. Like, that guy from Dragon Ball Z. Alright. The only thing is, while they're growing, they're invincible. But, I mean, then you can just cheese them with more charge shots. Oh, no! Whatever will I do? So here's the other thing the power, uh, bleh, the wave beam does. It activates those. Those you can only see with the, uh, thermal visor. Though you can kind of tell where they are. Just because of the level geometry. Sentry drones, they are weak to electrical attacks. And they also scramble your visor. They're also not very easy to see with a thermal visor. And I'm pretty sure there's two of them in here. Yeah, there's two of them. Ow. Oh, God. They also lock the doors if they see you. Oh, that's fair. Dragon Ball Z is a pretty silly series. <laughs> that's kind of why I like it, though. I'll admit I can't get into Super, though. I uh, just... I don't know what it is about it. I just It just bugs me. Oh, there it is. Now it's just kind of going crazy, shooting in every direction. I don't know if it hit any space pirates. Click. 
clever hiding spot. So yeah, the thing about the invisible pirates is uh, their AI is the best, as you can tell. Uh, they also, they have no guts. They can only attack you by getting up close to you and punching you right in the face. So if they get caught up on level geometry like that guy was, they're kind of just stuck and can't do anything. And you can just stun them with charge shots from the wave beam like a bajillion times in order to keep them away from you. So it feels like they're kind of supposed to be like a harder version of the space pirate, but they're just not. They're just not threatening in the slightest. They're just really easy to take care of. What is that? Oh, that's probably a turret. The music says there's another space pirate in here, but for the life of me, I cannot tell where it is. What? What the... What? Oh, God! Thanks, Dustin! You are the best. A gentleman and a schooler. You can also blow up these tanks to release the Metroids, should you so desire. I believe they will attack the space pirates if you let them, so, you know. Have fun with that. Have fun watching the space pirates get eaten by their by their hubris, as it were. The most irritating thing about the thermal visor is that uh, it makes this really obnoxious sound effect um, the whole time it's on. That and you can see things through walls a little bit, which can make things a little confusing sometimes if you're not really paying attention to what's going on. Other than that, it's kind of cool. Well, it doesn't even it doesn't have a mini map either. That's interesting. Hmm. There we go. Fortunately, the flying space pirates never become invisible, so you can just blow them up. Though, of course, they are easy to trace with the thermal visor, considering their jetpacks give off a lot of heat. Oh wait, there's more. Bada bing. Bada boom. All right. See you, Dustin. Uh, might as well stock up because we got a boss fight next. Well, actually, I'm gonna have to fight more space pirates along the way. So, yeah. I guess we'll stock up later. There we go. <laughs> Let's make it dark so they can't see anything and then have them fight invisible enemies. Duh, okay. Be whip. Make use of the save station real quick. Uh, yeah, I don't feel like fighting these guys. Fuck that. Though they are the regular shooty type of space pirates, so technically I don't have to use the thermal visor in here if I didn't want to, but screw it. I just want to get out of here. Um, can I just blow these guys up with, like, a super missile? Yeah! Oh, wait. His compadre saw me. The death animation is so silly. Whoop! Oh, no you don't. Ah, yes. Blow up this tank, for there is goodies inside. 
And we need all the missiles we can get, because the uh, super missile is actually going to come in pretty handy for the boss fight. <laughs> Bleh. The way they ragdoll is kind of entertaining. Bleh. Oh man, come on. Oh. Well, I didn't mean to shoot you, but yeah, sure, fine, whatever. Oh, he dodged. How nimble. That guy was stunned by something somehow. Yep, space pirates. They are the threat of the universe, I guess. Terrifying, aren't they? Uh, right. Blow up some crates, hopefully get some missiles out of the deal. Nope. And you don't run into missile recharge stations for like a really long time either. Like they don't appear until pretty much the end of the game, practically. Fine. Mm. I think there's only three missile recharge stations in the entire game. That's weird. These guys are still invisible. You still gotta use the thermal visor to log on to them. Whoa, okay. This is just an uncomfortable situation for all parties involved. Fortunately, there's another save station nearby. Yeah, it doesn't really describe what they do very well either. I mean, I think of a pirate, I think of like, Yar, matey, keel haul the yard yard. Now the, I imagine keel hauling in uh, space is a lot more violent. <laughs> Wouldn't last nearly as long either, now that I think about it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, the space pirates seem, like, concerned with, like, universal domination or something like that. Like, when's the last time you saw a pirate who wanted to take over the world? Well, then again, maybe pirates did want to take over the world. I don't remember seeing Blackbeard's bucket list. Maybe on there it was, take over the world, yar. And then you got... What is this guy doing? Why aren't my shots locking onto him either? What the hell is going on here? This is some weird shit. Okay. Is it working now? Uh. Yeah, this is weird. But yeah, who knows? Maybe Henry Avery wanted to take over the world, and then when he realized he couldn't do it, he's just like, yeah, never mind. I'll just set up Libertalia, trick a whole bunch of people into coming here. Blow them all up. Steal the money. Steal all the money. Arr, yar, me mateys, and all that. Okay. That's the other silly thing about the wave beam, is when its shots hit around what you're trying to hit, and not actually what you're trying to hit. Good times. All right. Time to go fight a giant rock monster, methinks. Oh, yep. Oh, come on. There we go. Time to thrash with Thardis. Oh my god, a giant rock! Okay... Huh?
You know, I kind of like that they gave this kind that they gave this giant rock monster kind of a dopey looking face. <laughs> you know, kind of kind of like the giant from like the Mickey Mouse Jack and the Beanstalk kind of has like that ridiculous looking jaw and whatnot. Like I don't know. I I love the design of this thing cuz it looks like a giant stupid dumb rock monster. It looks like it would not be the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. And the fact that they were able to do it to a pile of rocks is remarkable. So yeah, this is Thardis. Uh, that's pretty much the strategy for the fight is uh, turn on the thermal visor. Um, whoop, avoid getting hit by rocks. Uh, but yeah, turn on the thermal visor, see which one of his uh, particular chunks of body is weak to being assaulted, and then uh, use super missiles to damage it, pretty much. It's a pretty easy thing to do, actually. Uh, note that uh, while it's a... Uh, while it's... Bleh. While the rock isn't exposed, you can't lock onto it except with the thermal visor, and then when you actually expose it, it um, overloads your thermal visor until you destroy it. Eh, there we go. I've never played the Legacy of Cain games, so I would not be able to tell. Whoa! And of course, as the fight continues, he gets slightly harder. He summons more rocks and all that. He can freeze you with that uh, shockwave attack. He sends like a chain of icicles over to where you're standing, so you gotta jump over it or else you get frozen. And then of course, when he rolls into a giant ball, that's your cue to roll into a ball. And use the boost ball in order to dance around. Oh, there we go, yeah. Oh, dang! I forgot that's a thing you can do. You can also lay bombs in uh, Morph Ball mode to uh, reveal the rock bit uh, early if he rolls over the bombs. Now I just need to actually shoot it without his stupid hand getting in the way. Stupid giant rock monster. Has no consideration for my attempt to be... Uh, Uh, economical with my missiles. It is a very good track, and yet yeah, it does kind of have that weird, like, God, what even is this thing? Feeling to it, which, I mean, kind of fits. I mean, you're fighting a giant rock monster. It is pretty weird. Oh, good God. Good golly. Ouch. Did that expose it? Oh, yeah, I did. So yeah, after a while, he creates this mist that makes it really hard to see, but fortunately, we still have a lock-on, so, uh, who cares? Oh, great, my missiles are low. Yeah, got him. I have seen the new Wreck-It Ralph 2 trailer, and the ending to that thing is freaking nuts. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. That kid's gonna have nightmares for weeks. Oh, come on, you can't feed the pancakes to the bunny. The pan oh, no, the kitty doesn't eat them. But the kitty doesn't eat the pancakes, the kitty eats milkshakes. The bunny eats the pancakes. I think I'm out of missiles. Yep, I'm out of missiles. Oh, God. Alright, since I'm all out of missiles, I guess I gotta do it the old-fashioned way. Unless I'm able to get missiles out of these rocks, which I really wish he would give me, please. Nope, more energy. 
Fortunately, the fight's almost over. It doesn't take much longer after this. I'm pretty sure it's the last phase, yeah, at this point. I mean, I'll admit, I wasn't sure how to feel about a movie called Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet, but, uh... I don't know, it looks like they know what they're doing, so... Oh yeah, I mean, I'm sure the bunny respawn, but you... Know, poor baby Moana is gonna have nightmares forever. Oh my god! The bunny exploded after eating so many pancakes! Oh, come on. Thardis, you are the worst, and I hate you. Disney's gigantic. I don't think I've seen that. Here's another super cool power up. Spider Ball. Spider Ball. Spider Ball. Does whatever a Spider Ball does. So, this is actually a power up from uh, blah, 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 Metroid 2. Uh, it gets a bit of an upgrade in this uh, game. Well, actually, no, it gets a bit of a downgrade in this game. It's not really that cool in this game, but, I mean, you can use it to travel along these magnetic tracks now. Whee! Which I'm pretty sure I can scan now. Yep, cool. You can use it to go up these uh, uh, spider ball tracks, which is cool. I mean, I like it. But in uh, Metroid 2, you can travel over any surface with the uh, spider ball. Which, interestingly, in the 2D games, it only appears in Metroid 2. It didn't appear in Super Metroid, or Fusion, or any other game aside from Metroid 2, and then the Prime games, which the Prime games make the most out of the Morph Ball. Like, they use it in so many cool and creative ways that, like, it's not like the 2D games are just like, oh boy, here comes the Morph Ball section, whoop-de-doo. Like, the Prime games, it's like, oh yeah, Morph Ball. I'm gonna have a good time now. So there's actually an ice door up that magnetic track, otherwise I'd go out there. And here we are in another section of Magmore Caverns. Magmore Caverns pretty much links most areas in the game. Let's see, I believe this is a save room. Yep. Alright, a save in Magmore Caverns means I'm going to pause for a little second while I just do a couple custodial things, end a recording, start a new recording. Actually, what time is it? Yeah, i got time to do a little bit more. So I'm going to pause here for a minute uh, while I just uh, take care of fixing things up so that I don't record five-hour videos.